President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has assured his predecessor Muhammad Buhari that he and his close aides will be spared in any anti-corruption war his government is currently engaging in. According to information reaching us from Sahara Reporters, reviews that on the 9th of Monday, 26 June 2023, there was a secret meeting between Tinubu and Muhammad Buhari in London, United Kingdom. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu assures his predecessor Muhammad Buhari that the Department of State Service DSS have been charged to continue the investigation of politically exposed persons by the anti-corruption body, the Economic and Financial Crime Commission (EFCC). Already, the DSS has carried out raids on EFCC offices in Lagos and Abuja, respectively, cutting away sensitive files, documents, and flash drives on investigation into alleged fraudulent activities of former governors, senators, and ministers. However, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu returned to Nigeria on Tuesday, the 27th June 2023, ahead of 8 Kabi celebration after spending a week in Europe. The president departed Nigeria on 20 June 2023 to participate in the two-day New Global Financial Pact Summit held in Paris, France. Tinubu was initially scheduled to be back in Abuja on Saturday, proceeded to London, United Kingdom for a short private visit to former president Muhammad Buhari. On Monday night, the 26th of June 2023, Tinubu met with former president Muhammad Buhari. However, According to information from our reliable source, what formed the subject matter of that discussion was an agreement that Mama Dubuari and his close aides will not be bothered by any prop or anti-corruption war during Tinubu's tenure. According to a statement from our source, Tinubu met Buari to reportedly discuss that Buari and his close aides will not be bothered with any corruption war. Earlier on Tuesday, a libel source told our correspondent that the DSS told the anti-corruption body EFCC to stay clear of political cases for now. According to him, the recent raid on EFCC offices in Ikoi, Lagos and later in Abuja were more political than they were made to look. The DSS had told the EFCC to concentrate on non-political cases for now. During the raids at the EFCC offices, DSS operatives scattered away files and flash drives containing sensitive information about former governors, ministers and senators under investigations, the source stated. On Sunday, June 18, 2023, Sarah reporters exclusively reported that the DSS raided the headquarters of its sister's agency the EFCC on Friday night, June 16, 2023. It was reported that the raid lasted early Saturday morning. The action was undertaken under the cover of the night to prevent the public from knowing about it. EFCC personnel were also instructed not to mention anything concerning the raid to members of the public. An insider had told Sarah reporters at the time that the DSS was working in the interest of someone very important to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. However, another source said it might be linked to the recent closure of the EFCC office in Ikoyi, Lagos by the DSS. Also, we learned that some of the investigators handling the case of former Zamfara State Governor Bello Matawale were to be summoned by the DSS for interrogation. That is actually intimidation and this is exactly what former Attorney General of the Federation Abubakar Malami did during Ibrahim Agu tenure as EFCC chairman to get several suspects of the hook, one of the source stated. It was revealed that Governor Bello Matawale 
was being investigated by the EFCC in two separate cases. One of them is a case involving his private company which got money from the National Security Advisor's Office without executing the contract which was investigated under the chairmanship of Ibrahim Magu. The other cases involves the alleged fraud committed by Governor Bello Matawale while in office. Someone close to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu also informed our source that the president was aware of the moves being made by the former governor to stop the anti-corruption body from probing him, which includes obtaining court orders to restrain the commission and other agencies from carrying out their investigations. It must be noted that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu recently suspended the current EFCC chairman Abdul Rashid Bawal from office indefinitely over allegation of corruption. However, in the June 18 report, several reporters noted that it was not clear what the agenda of President Tinubu and the DSS were regarding the detention of Abdul Rashid Bawal and the cutting away of sensitive documents relating to the Commission's investigations. But revelation made by sources on Tuesday shows that the raid were politically with the cutting away of files and flash drives related to the probe of former governors, senators and ministers. Last month, operatives of the DSS stormed the Lagos office of the EFCC, preventing officials of the anti graph agency from gaining access to their office in Ikoyi, Lagos. Some reporters also learned from top sources in both agencies that hundreds of EFCC personnel were locked out of office due to what was widely believed to be centered on office ownership disagreements. The EFCC officers are shocked they have been using the building for more than 20 years. Several suspects are in there and there are fears that some might have been illegally released, a top source stated. However, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu later ordered the DSS to vacate the EFCC office immediately, stating that if there were issues between the two important agencies of government, they should be resolved amicably. Reacting to the incident, the EFCC in a statement on its official Facebook page described the siege as shocking, saying it had wider implications for Nigerians' fight against economic and financial crimes. The operatives of the Lagos State Command of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission EFCC, arrived at their office on number 15 Awolowo Road, Ikoyi, in the morning on 30 May 2023, to be denied entry by agents of the Department of State Services DSS, who had barricaded the entrance with armored personnel carriers. The development is strange to the Commission given that we have cohabited with the DSS in that facility for 20 years without incident. By denying operatives access to their offices, the Commission's operation at its largest hub with over 500 personnel, hundreds of exhibits and many suspects in detention have been disrupted. Cases scheduled for court hearing have been aborted why many suspects who had been invited for questioning are left unattended. Even more alarming is that suspects in detention are left without care with grave implications for their rights as inmates. All of these have wider implications for the nation's fight against economic and financial crimes. The siege is inconsistent with the synergy expected of agencies working for the same government and nation, especially when there are ongoing discussion on the matter. The statement from our top source concluded.